Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We're continuing with Chapter 7, and today we're looking at Section 7.4, which is adding and subtracting rational expressions with unlike denominators. So I like to think of this as a continuation of the last section. There is one objective in this section. We're going to add and subtract rational expressions with unlike denominators, and we're still working on the same SLO as we have since the beginning of the chapter. All right, so as usual, let's talk about simpler, happier times. Uh, the regular fraction version of this is something like subtract 7 tenths minus 8 fifteenths. I don't think you need me to tell you uh, how that works, but let's go over the steps because uh, the steps are gonna be the same when we throw X's and Y's into the mix. So the first step is to find the least common denominator, uh, which we went over in the last section. It was objective two. The second step is to rewrite each expression so that its denominator is the LCD that you just found. We also went over that in the last section. And then the third step is to add or subtract the expressions, which now have the same denominator. We went over that at the beginning of the last section. And then finally, as usual, you're going to simplify your answer if you can. All right, so uh, let's switch over to the tablet. All right, here we go, 7 tenths minus 8 fifteenths. Step one is to find the LCD. Uh, so if you wanna pause the video and think about that for a minute, what is the LCD for uh, 7 tenths and 8 fifteenths? Okay, 7 tenths minus 8 fifteenths. So the first step is to find the LCD. Um, so in this section, I'm not going to take extra time to calculate the LCDs. I'm going to encourage you to do that. So uh, when I get to my next batch of examples, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and find all of the LCDs, all right? Uh, for this one, the LCD is 30. So then step two is to write those fractions so they have denominator 30. So here's how I like to write that out. I'm going to put my original fractions here and I'm going to leave some space around them. And then in the next step, they're going to be over 30. Okay, so question number one, uh, how do you change a denominator 10 into denominator 30? You multiply the top and the bottom by three which would make the new numerator 21. So 21 over 30. And then question number two, how do you change a denominator 15 into 30? You multiply the top and the bottom by two. All right, so those fractions are rewritten. So they have the same denominator. So now we just uh, subtract our fractions that have the common denominator, and that's really easy. Uh, 30 on the bottom, and then 21 minus 16 on top, which is five. Uh, and then this one can be simplified, right? Five over 30 simplifies to one sixth. All right. So again, I don't think you needed me to tell you how to do that, but it's going to work the same way when we throw X's and Y's into the mix. Okay, so again, here are my steps. These are the steps that we're going to use on the next batch of examples. All right. So what I would like you to do at this point is to pause the video and try to find the LCDs for uh, A, B, C, and D, okay? Uh, pretend that these are lists of expressions, just like we did in section 7.3, and try to find the LCD for each one, because when we go over these examples, um, I'm not going to show all my work 
uh, finding the LCD. I might show a little bit of my work when we get into like the last two, uh, but I'm gonna go through that part kind of fast. Okay, so find the LCDs, pause the video, come back when you're done. Okay, so here's our first example, 14 over three X squared plus six over X. Step one, find the LCD. Hopefully you found that the LCD is three X squared. Step two, write those fractions. So they have three X squared as their denominator. Well, one of them already does. So that's nice. That cuts my work for that step in half. All right, I just have to fix the six over X. And then when we get to the next step, these fractions will both be over three X squared. So the question is uh, X times what equals three X squared? The answer is three X. Do that on the top and the bottom, which is gonna make the new numerator 18 X. All right, so now my common denominator is 3x squared. My numerator is 14 plus 18x. Now, is that 32x? No, that is not 32x. That is 14 plus 18x. All right. So that's about it. You can stop there. Uh, this thing cannot be simplified. It's already in simplest form. Uh, to completely convince you of that, I could factor the top uh, by pulling out a two. Okay, but even if I do that, neither one of those factors has anything in common with uh, any factors on the bottom. Uh, so I could have stopped here. Sometimes I say to students that I will smile if you write your answer like that because uh, it shows me that you did try to simplify it. Okay. All right. But I'm perfectly happy if you just leave it at 14 plus 18x over 3x squared. I'll just assume that you looked at that and you could tell that you couldn't simplify it. All right. Next example, 5 over a minus 7 plus 5 over 7 minus a. Now, this one is a little different. If you got stuck on the LCD on this one, uh, that's understandable. Actually, for this one, uh, you can just make the LCD a minus seven. Let me show you why. Uh, this one is already a minus seven. So then I would just have to convince you that there is a way to change this seven minus a into a minus seven. Well, if you think back to section 7.1, uh, there was a certain trick that we talked about. We used it for simplifying something like a minus seven over seven minus a. Um, and that's related to the fact that uh, you can change that seven minus a into an a minus seven by multiplying by negative one. Okay. In, in case you're not completely convinced that that works, let me just show you why that works. When you distribute the negative one into seven minus a, uh, what you end up with is negative seven plus a, which is of course the same thing as a minus seven, right? All right, so now these things are both over a minus seven. We need to see what happens with this problem. So that's already a five. And since we multiplied the other five by negative one, that is a negative five. What are those gonna add up to? Well, they're both over a minus seven. So you just add your numerators, five plus negative five is zero. And of course, zero divided by anything is zero. All right, so those two rational expressions add up to zero. That's kind of special. That doesn't happen every day. All right, next. Uh, 
Uh, there we go. X over X squared minus four minus five over X squared minus four X plus four. So for this one, I will show a little bit of my work uh, finding the LCD. In order to find the LCD for these, you have to factor. Uh, this factors X minus two X plus two. And this one over here factors X minus two squared. So if you do every factor you ever see to the highest power you ever see it, your LCD is going to be X minus two squared times X plus two. All right. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna rewrite these things. I'm gonna write this as X over X minus two X plus two. And I'm gonna rewrite this as X minus two squared. All right, so we need to make both of those denominators X minus two squared times X plus two. All right, good thing I left a blank page uh, after this one, because I think I'm gonna need it. Okay, in order to change this, fir this first denominator into X minus two squared times X plus two, I need another X minus two. You see that this is what I'm trying to get. This is what I have. So I need one more factor X minus two. All right, so let's get rid of those circles and multiply the top and the bottom by X minus two. All right, and then next door, I need X minus two squared times X plus two. I have X minus two squared. What am I missing? I am missing X plus two. So far, so good. All right, you know what I think I'm gonna do instead of uh, going on to the next page, I think I will just, once I hit the bottom of this page, I'll just wrap around and erase what's on top. I think that'll work better. Okay, so my common denominator is X minus two squared times X plus two. And my new numerator is X times X minus two. Same denominator over here, X minus two squared times X plus two. New numerator is five times X plus two. All right, so let's, uh-oh, uh let me not hit the wrong thing here. There we go, we'll just we'll make some room up here. Yeah, I think we can get rid of that. All right, so now I'm gonna write it as one big fraction with denominator X minus two squared X plus two. And why don't we do this? Um, oh, never mind. We'll just, I won't try to do a shortcut. Okay, X times X minus two minus five times X plus two. All right, so now what I need to do is uh, simplify that numerator. So I'm gonna do that by distributing the X and the negative five. So that's gonna give me X squared minus two X. And then remember you're distributing a negative five. So that's gonna give you minus five X minus 10. Denominator is still X squared, X minus two squared X plus two. Okay, so what may be the final answer when you combine the like terms, the minus two X and the minus five X, the final answer might be X squared minus seven X minus 10 with denominator X minus two squared X plus two. 
Okay, but before I put uh, uh, a big box around that and move on, let's convince ourselves that we can't simplify that. Now, I enjoy this problem because that x squared minus 7x minus 10 looks like maybe you can simplify it, right? Let's see, can I come up with two numbers that add up to negative seven and multiply to negative 10? Well, maybe numbers that add up to negative seven are negative five, negative two. And that would be really exciting because then I'd be able to get rid of one of those X minus twos on the bottom. Oh, but there's something wrong with that, isn't there? X minus five times X minus two is X squared minus seven X plus 10. All right, so that's not going to work. Let's see, uh, can I factor x squared minus 7x minus 10? Again, they would have to add up to negative 7, multiply to negative 10. So we would have to have 1 plus 1 minus. Uh, 1 and 10, 2 and 5, I don't think you're going to get those to add up to negative 7. So x squared minus 7x minus 10 is actually prime, which means this is in simplest form. Uh, it just looked like maybe it wasn't. I was hoping maybe I could simplify it. Oh, well. All right, last example. Oops. Um, I would like to encourage you to pause the video. Hopefully you already have the LCD. Uh, for this problem. Well, now I would like you to try to take it all the way. See if you can do this problem all the way from the beginning to the end uh, and then come back and compare notes, okay? All right, so hopefully you've tried it. Let's see how you did. All right, uh, you know what I was thinking when I was doing the last problem is since I had to write these factors anyway, I might as well just write them here. I noticed that this lag, uh, at least as far as I noticed, wasn't too bad in the beginning. I wonder if it gets worse uh, as the recording gets later or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this one would be x plus 10, x minus 2, right? Okay, uh, so the LCD, yeah, we'll write it here. I don't usually do that, but um, every factor you ever see to the highest power you ever see it. Uh, I don't see anything ever to a power higher than one. I see an X plus 10. I see an X plus two. And I see an X minus two. Okay. Don't forget we have x plus four, x plus one. All right, so now let's try to build that uh, denominator. So on this first expression, I am missing the factor x minus two. So let's get that in there. And in the second factor, I mean in the second uh, expression, I am missing the x plus two. So let's get that in there. Squeeze that in there. All right. So uh, would it be okay if we just went ahead and combined these, so I'm skipping one little step, and then my uh, two separate numerators, which I'm gonna add in just a minute, are x plus four, x minus two, and x plus one, x plus two. So far so good. All right, so now um, we're gonna simplify the numerator. 
So I need to make some room up top here. Okay, so what we're gonna do this time is foil. Let's see, numerator and denominator, we have x plus 10, x plus two, x minus two. Okay, now I'm gonna put a great big red plus sign in the middle. And that's gonna be for my uh, two numerators that used to be separate, but are about to uh, get combined. All right, so when you foil uh, these two here, you get x squared plus 2x minus 8, right? And when you foil these two over here, you get x squared plus 3x plus 2, right? Okay, let me make just a little bit more room. When you combine your like terms, you get 2x squared, come on, 2x squared, uh, plus 5x minus 6. And of course, that's over x plus 10, x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so the only question is, can we factor 2x squared plus 5x minus 6? And then uh, can we simplify this answer? Well, let's see, how should we do that? Uh, I think most of you probably like this method for factoring. Can we find numbers that um, add up to 5 and multiply to negative 12? Well, that would come from uh, a 1 and a 12, or a 2 and a 6, or a 3 and a 4. And of course, one would have to be positive, one would have to be negative. Um, I don't think there's any way to get those to add up to 5, no matter what you do with the signs, um, which means that trinomial in the numerator is prime, which means this thing is in simplest form. All right, just put a box around the answer. Hopefully it'll show up here someday. All right, uh, so there it comes, okay. So um, let me just say about this section, it's been my experience that most students don't find these problems very difficult. They are just a little long and tedious and boring, all right? So it is what it is, we just deal with it, all right? Um, I actually like the problems in the next section. In the next section, we're going to be solving rational equations. These problems, I think, are often a little bit shorter, not always, but sometimes. Uh, students do have some difficulty, though, with 7.5, just, I think, uh, conceptually. All right, so hopefully as you're watching this video, you still have plenty of time left in the week uh, to do 7.5. All right, so we'll see you next time uh, to talk about 7.5. Take care.